So we're still dealing with this this monstrous cable equation. You mean this beautiful cable equation? Says you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in the previous video, we focused completely on the space constant, mm -hmm. and we ignored the time constant mm -hmm. by letting time just run out really mm -hmm. far. So we should do the opposite, probably. Yeah. And how do we do that? Um. Well, let me let me fix our equation. Right. X is gone. Now it's just a function of time. It's good. And we can do that. Time's not that hard. So with our cable, we had a long like tube like mm -hmm. that. Right. And it's kind of a line. So mm -hmm. I guess if we want to get rid of our space constant, we change it from a line to like a point. Mm -hmm. So we make it a sphere. Okay. Like a balloon. Yeah, or a ball, rubber ball. Rubber ball's fine. Anything sort of spherical. And we put a tube right into the middle where water is coming out, and it's spritzing out, and it's pushing up against the sides of this ball evenly mm -hmm. and all at once. And, and so there's no spatial extent. It just... Yeah. And then, it's, okay, it's and then so there's a little capacitance, stretchiness, and mm -hmm. that can push... Mm -hmm. The Say if this is in water, that could push water away without anything actually flowing through the ball. And then if there are holes in the ball as well... Then we're going to have water flowing through the holes. And so that's exactly like our capacitor and our resistor, respectively, right? Yep. Okay. okay. So what does that mean in terms of the math? Well, let's get rid of that thing because we're not dealing with it anymore. So it becomes a less icky equation. Mm-hmm. We have our dv of t dt minus r vm of t equals zero. Good. And what's the solution for that? Well, you showed us the solution in NeuroWiki. Neuro -Wiki. Exactly all the details how to get it. Let's just look at the end result. So in the end result, we kind of have two. Mm -hmm. um, for charging up and for discharging, right? So charging. Our solution is we have... Vm of t mm -hmm. equals our starting point mm -hmm. plus the difference between our end point mm -hmm. and our starting point. Mm -hmm. And then this sort of crazy exponential thing. That's right. So negative t over tau. Okay. Make that a little bit more obvious. That's right. And then our discharging. Right. Charging. We have Vm of t. Mm -hmm equals our starting point mm -hmm. times this e thing again. Mm -hmm. So an exponential, in both cases an exponential with a negative exponent, mm -hmm. which means as time gets larger, that's going to get smaller. So let's do that actually. Let's look at, um, let's start plotting perhaps as a function of time, so time along the x-axis. Let's look at how our voltage changes, and we'll be plotting Vm over here. Okay, and really quickly, in terms of the balloon, yes, our voltage is, it's the change in pressure between right. not, like inside the balloon and outside the right. balloon? Right, it's not the volume, it's the change in it's pressure. It's the pressure. That's so we're thinking the key thing. pressure of this balloon. That's right, pressure within the balloon. Okay, so let's start with the charging equation. Yeah. So if our t is zero. Zero, it's time zero. Then, then this that, is e to the zero is one. One minus one is zero. So, so we that multiply. whole second term goes away. Yeah. And we're starting at v zero. Well, that makes sense. That's where we're starting at. Okay. Let t get very large. Okay. Then we have e to a very large negative number. What does that mean? E becomes zero. Zero. One minus zero is one. Okay. So the second term is right there. We have v naught is v infinity minus v naught, which is v infinity. Yeah. The v naughts cancel. Okay. So that all works out. Yeah. So we go from the right. We start in the right place and we end in the right place. And in the meantime, it's an exponential. So we exponentially charge up. Okay, good. <laughs> it sounds so fun. It does. <laughs> that's how you have to think about it. So that's more exciting. Good. And then we get near the infinity. All right. And now let's say we turn off um, the current, or we turn off the water, and things start to... They, the pressure back, starts to go back go to... Go back to what it was at the beginning. Yeah, because all the yeah. water is going to flow out. That's right. So house. it discharges back to where it was. Okay, okay, so now we have the second equation. At time zero, what is that equal to? V infinity. Right, because e to the zero is one. So yep. it's one times v infinity. So we start at v infinity. Good. So that's where we want to start. And if t gets really large, e to the minus t becomes... Uh, 
really large, and so E becomes zero. That's and right. And so the whole thing goes down to zero. And again, we would have written this equation a little different to have it go down to V zero. But that's a little more complicated, but it's, it's not very much more complicated. So this is going to the right. same. And this looks really familiar. This We've seen this before. This what? just like looks like charging a capacitor. And it looks like a capacitor resistor. It looks like the passive membrane unit. Yeah. Because it is. How would you look at that? Isn't that amazing? But Things now we have some back. equations. Okay. So, so now we have to think about this in terms of our time constant. Right. So let's look at the time constant. Time right. constant tau. What is that equal to? Tau, well, we define that as Rm times Cm. So the resistance of the membrane times the capacitance of the membrane. Right. So again, by changing, for example, from a stretchy balloon to a steel ball, you could change Cm and you can change the time it takes to get to a, a, a particular pressure. Okay. But wait. So capacitance of the membrane doesn't change very often. Right, that's so pretty... that's good. So let's actually deal with a situation where we don't have the capacitance change. And in fact, why don't we change this to a steel ball, make that really very, very, so that's, that's how, what is that? Is that a high capacitance or a low capacitance? Well, if capacitance is the stretchiness of the right. membrane, sort of, yes. then a steel ball would have incredibly low capacitance. Exactly. You know, you fill it up and it, the, the walls barely move. Okay. So this is a steel ball. It's a steel ball now. And now let's start off, let's say we have large holes in the steel ball. Okay, let's draw these, these large holes. Right, right, right. There's nice several, large holes. Several here. whoppers. Yeah, all over the place, right? And we still are filling up from the middle. Mm-hmm. So we'll do our blue water right. going and of course, what's going to happen is the walls won't change much, and the water's going to flow out very, very quickly. So the final pressure that you're going to reach is low or high. Um, well, it would be the pressure between the inside and the outside would be probably pretty a small difference That's right. because most of the water is just leaking out anyway. So exactly. you're not having a pressure. So in fact, out. what's actually happening here is just like V equals I R, right? For the flow that you're getting, R is very low. And so the final, in this case, P, pressure, is the equivalent. For the given flow, given the low resistance, you get a very small change in pressure. Okay. Okay? Now, how quickly will you get to that final pressure? Um, it would be pretty quickly. Yes, you get very quickly to that final pressure. So, again, I don't know if you want to draw the, what that graph would look like. We'll draw it down here. That sounds good. A smaller little graph. Mm-hmm. So, if... This is zero, and this is like an axis of, of do you want to do voltage or pressure? Uh, let's do voltage, because okay. it's really equivalent, and it'll be easier for us to think about that ultimately, as voltage. So you're going to very quickly rise up to the final voltage in a case where the membrane has lots of holes in it, low resistance, high conductance, and the, the time it will take to do that will be very short. So that's tau small. Mm -hmm. R small, tau small fast. So we may want to... Okay, we'll write that over. Yeah, that's good. Tess. I'm going to get rid of our charging and discharging equations, okay. actually. So now that we have our graph, we can just go off of that. That's good. Okay. So, tau small, r small, this is for fixed capacitance, r small, tau small, charging Actually, what you just erased would show that, too, because you're dividing t by tau, and if t is small, t is going to get large pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Now, let's now change our ball so it's got nice small holes in it. It's still a steel ball, so it's, its capacitance the is very low. It's the same as the previous same ball. Same size. Same size, same capacitance, but it's got a lot of small holes. But oh, there's small. fewer surface area of those holes is much less than the surface area of the big holes, okay? Mm -hmm. And now we start injecting pressure, and it comes out the side. And then what happens is it does start to flow out, which is good. Mm -hmm. So there's all of our water coming out. So it's coming out of these nice, steady streams. And now if we think in terms of V equals IR, again, the final pressure is going to be... Well, let's see. The final pressure is going to be really... Hi, yes. because like 
the water has to flow out, but it doesn't have enough space to flow out, so it's all sort of cramped inside. Yeah, it's, it's like it's a high resistance situation. It's and like so, having a bunch of people try to get through the passage under Strosacker. Yeah, that's right, and it's you know people have to keep on stopping for each other. Mm -hmm. okay. So, but it should take us probably longer to get there. And it'll take longer to get there. So back on our our plot that we had there, let's again draw that. Now it's going to take a while to get up to that point more slowly but it's going to be a higher point. and it gets to a higher final value okay. excellent so now we can to summarize what we said over here we could say that when r is high resistance is high then tau, tau should is be high, high for a fixed capacitance and it charges slowly and again in terms of those equations of course you're dividing t by a big number so it takes a long time for that exponent to get larger mm -hmm. so now the interesting thing is we did a little trick here with this v not v infinity plot, right? We were plotting it as a function of the final value, which means we were essentially dividing out what that final value was. And that makes it easy to compare. So that would be dividing by the final pressure. Mm -hmm. So because V equals IR, um, this one reaches a higher voltage That's right. because it's got a higher Resistance. resistance. But if we do it as scaled by the infinity... Then they're both going to reach the same thing, but this one's just going to take longer. A longer time. And so we can now plot them relative to the blue line and show that, and even though they won't get any higher or they won't get any higher than each other, one will zoom up fast this and then reach that final value, and it would also zoom down fast to the final value. And in contrast, again, the scaled version of, of the graph we showed now red took much much longer it might not even get up to it the might same. not completely get up to that but let's say it does get close Beep. and then it'll much more slowly get down from that and, and there it you would are. Go over here. that's right okay now the last thing we want to do is talk about the time constant as a yard as a, a meter stick or as a, a measuring stick in time mm -hmm. and let's think about in one time constant if we go back to the, let's just look at the decay equation, which was sim simpler. V m of t is equal to V infinity e to the minus t over tau. Let's say that you've waited enough time that it's one time constant. Okay. So, so what do you have that? would equal tau. Tau. So then that becomes tau over tau, which is? One. Right? So it's one over e. Okay. So V of tau, V m of tau is that it's 1 over e times it's v infinity divided by e. Now, v since e is about 3, 2.7182x, mm -hmm. that's going down to about 34% of v infinity. So let's indicate that down here. It's now down to about a third of the value, either going up to or down from, that's it, about a third of the value. There, there. So that's now... Yeah, the discharge actually is a little different. The charging is, okay, yeah, the discharge would go down to about a third. Mm -hmm. from, the, from here, there, from here that's right. Point. So actually, it would go down, if it's going down to 34%, yeah, so it's only a third of what it was. Yeah. Now, the charging is 1 minus that, good. So 1 minus 34 is about 66, something like that. So in that one time constant, that's right, you would charge up about that. Okay. okay, and so we can think about this time constant as like our meter stick. So from here, That's our right. starting point, if we have a large time constant, That's right. here's our red time constant, That's right. which was our high resistance, That's right. then it'll take like that long to get to that, right. that spot, whereas right. with our little green time constant, it's just That's little, right. little itty bitty. And now notice, if we scale time, so we scale voltage by the V infinity. If we scale time by tau... Then these would look the same. Exactly. So you can actually collapse both the change in voltage and the change in time by the appropriate scaling factors, and everything looks the same. And that's another cool thing, which allows you to do other comparisons if you need to. Okay. okay. Cool. That makes sense.